All right, welcome YouTube. Today we're gonna to discuss net present value, internal rate of return, and modified internal rate of return. And I'm gonna be using Excel to demonstrate this. So we have two projects that we're comparing here. We have the cash flows from project one and the cash flows from project two right here. Uh, in year zero, this is the expense of the project, along with the future projected cash flows. And these valuation methods, net present value, internal rate of return, and modified internal rate of return can be useful to determine which project you want to go with. And this doesn't just apply to your finance class. This actually applies to real life. So for example, if I'm deciding to make a YouTube video about cars, I would probably make one about a Corvette first because it has a higher rate of return. My future cash flows from my Corvette videos are much higher than other cars. And that's why I like to make videos about Corvettes. Now these Excel videos don't pay very well, but I enjoy the content. So that's why I make them. So let's go forward, net present value. So how do you do net present value in Excel? Well, you can type in, you go to the cell and type in equals NPV. And then you type in your rate. So this is your discount rate. For the discount rate in NPV, typically we'll use the weighted average cost of capital and that's usually supplied to you, whether you are working for a company or working on a problem on your homework right now. So let's say that our weighted average cost of capital is 9%. You either want to type in 9% or put in 0 0.09 in here in Excel, otherwise your answer will be all over the place. Next you put a comma in and you drag down to include all your year, not years, all your cash flows. Enter. So the net present value of this project is $37,444.35. If we just drag this over to the other project, it will calculate the NPV for that one as well. So you see that the NPV of that project is 18,369 and two cents. Now what about the internal rate of return? What the heck is that? So let's type in equals IRR and we will go to highlight the cash flows and hit enter. Okay, so we got 28% for the IRR for the first project. The second project we got 17%. So let's go ahead and open this up a little bit more. 28.34% and 17.28%. Now what I want you to do here is take your IRR and go back to NPV and enter the IRR 28.34 in your NPV formula. You notice that the NPV is close to zero. If, in fact, if we included more digits from the internal rate of return, the NPV would be zero. And that's what internal rate of return is. It is the rate of return that you get when you're setting your NPV equal to zero. And so it's very important to see that. A lot of people don't teach this that way and it's important to see that so you understand what's going on. Why might this be bad? Why might this be bad? You guys have an answer? I don't like internal rate of return. I don't use it in the real world because this is not an accurate way to look at projects for me. I use the modified internal rate of return. It's a much better metric. So I'm gonna undo this. And we're gonna take a look at modified internal rate of return now. <clears throat> now with modified internal rate of return, you're gonna see some interesting things pop up here. So we have the values, which is these. You have the finance rate, and the finance rate that Excel wants is the rate at which you borrowed the money. So that would be your average cost of capital. In this instance, we'll use 9%. The reinvestment rate. So the reinvestment rate is actually the rate that you're going to get when you reinvest those future cash flows. So with these future cash flows, if we're going to reinvest it and make more money, we'll enter a higher rate there. But for this problem, we'll just use our weight adjusted cost of capital 9% again. So let me type that in there. Boom, 
so you get a more realistic figure there. Now, weighing these two projects against each other, which one would I pick? Well, I would definitely pick the first project. In real life, when you're out in the real world and you are evaluating projects, you always want to estimate your future cash flows, and sometimes you don't really know, and so you're often making forecasts to get these numbers. So a good real life application of this is actually my YouTube channel. I can look at the analytics and see what videos you guys like, what videos advertisers like, and I can satisfy both of you while generating good cash flow for myself. And so these Excel videos cost me nothing to make and I make them for the purpose of education, not for profit, but my car videos, I actually am now learning that I can profit off them if I make the videos that you guys wanna watch. And so that's an interesting application. I'm actually applying this stuff to my car videos. And so I think that that's super interesting. And this is very helpful when you are making financial decisions. Uh, you can weigh different projects against each other when you are able to estimate the future cash flows. It's a little bit tricky to do at first, but once you get the hang of it, it is very helpful. So that is all I have for you. Thank you for watching. Make sure that you enjoy your car.